How's it going, Nat Automotive, YouTube subscribers and viewers? My name's Andrew, welcome back to the channel, and I want to welcome any new viewers or new subscribers to the channel. On this channel, we do all sorts of stuff with cars, go-karts, fabrication, you name it, it'll be on the channel here. Now, today's video, I'm resuming a series that I started a little while ago called How to Build a Go-Kart, where I basically walk you through all the necessary steps you'll need to take to build a go-kart of your own, just like I did. And I want to share the knowledge that I gained, because um, I didn't know everything right off the bat when I built this go-kart. It was a huge learning experience, which is what the first video is all about. So if you guys haven't watched the first four, first four videos, I highly encourage you to do so. The links for those will be in the description. Uh, the first video, to recap, we go over like the motivations of like why build your own go-kart. The second video and third video, we go about um, laying a tape diagram on the floor to help you get the necessary sizing for the go-kart you want to build. The fourth video, I actually go on the computer and CAD out the measurements for the frame that you want to build. And the fifth video, which is the video that I will be recording today, is the video about all of the necessary tools you will need. You might think I'm doing a garage sale here. I'm not. This video, I'm going to show you all the tools that you will need to build a go-kart of your own. So you might think, well, I know what tools I need. Fine. This is for video. This these videos are for people who have little to no experience all the way for people who have a lot of experience and for a lot of people they don't know what tools that will be needed for the job so and that's a huge cost in the part of the build like all these tools here probably about I don't know five six hundred dollars um, the go-kart that I built with no tools is about seventeen hundred if you add tools that's twenty three hundred bucks so that's six hundred dollars in tools that I had to buy because I didn't have these before so it's a huge cost to your build uh, and it limits you know how intricate you can make your build based on the tools that you will need so that's why I felt that it was important to make this video um, because it'll help you decide how in depth you want to go with your build based on your budget and how many tools that you will need to build the go-kart that you want to build. So what I've done here is I've laid out all the possible tools that I used on this build that I could think of and there might be a few minor ones that I'm forgetting over in the shelving over here but these are the main ones. Um, so I laid them out for you, I made a list and so I'm going to go ahead and start um, and go through this list of the tools that I think you will need um, based on also how important they are to the build. Also, one thing I wanted to go over before I start talking about what tools you need is the place on where to buy your tools because that also has a big influence on how much you're going to pay for certain tools. Now, if you can recognize some of the brands and some of these tools, you'll see that I went to Harbor Freight a lot during this build. And a lot of people might cringe at the words Harbor Freight when you know they think tools and stuff. That's perfectly understandable. Yeah, their tools may not be the best quality because they're all made in China, but to be honest, a lot of tools like Rigid or Ryobi or a lot of them are also made in China. Um, but here's my take on Harbor Freight. If you're a hobbyist or you do this as an amateur or on the side, Harbor Freight tools are perfect because they can withstand the workload that you need for them. However, if you're a contractor, if you're a professional welder, if you do you know, metal fabrication every day for your job, then I don't think the tools can you know, meet up to the demand that you um, are asking them for your job. But if you're just doing it for a hobby build or on the side or for fun, Harbor Freight tools are the best because they're cheap, they're really affordable and they have a huge selection and of course if you already know Harbor Freight and you've subscribed to their uh, you know, newsletter or emails, they have coupons all the time so you can get really good deals on Harbor Freight tools. So in sum, if you're just doing this as a hobby, the Harbor Freight tools work really well. I know a lot of people criticize the Harbor Freight welders um, for not you know, living up to the job. I've put, I've put probably you know, 10 welding wire spools through this little MIG welder, which cost me $90, and it hasn't given me hardly any trouble. Um, the welding tips will kind of get, you know, uh, gummed up sometimes, but that's probably also on my error uh, for setting it up 
sometimes. But I've had no trouble with the welder and you know, for the job that I needed it to do for this pretty intricate go-kart build, it did the job just fine. So if you're worried about the quality of Harbor Freight tools, they're good. They'll get the job done for what you need them to do. Like I said, if you're doing this as a professional daily thing for a career, yeah, then they might not meet up to the demand. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into the list of tools you need. And one thing I'll try and do also is I'll put snippets from like the Harbor Freight Tools ad with the price in it as well so you can kind of get an idea with like how much um, certain things will cost you uh, and if you want to buy those based on how much it costs. Okay, so the first and foremost tools that you will need for a go-kart build are probably an obvious one, but I call them like your standard handyman tools. Hammer, assortment of different screwdrivers, Phillips and flathead, crescent wrench, monkey wrench, you know, stuff like that. Your basic tools that you'll find in a standard toolbox. And going off of that, the next one, um, also probably an obvious one, is a tape measure. But a regular tape measure helps, or a ruler. Um, but what I found really helpful on my go-kart build was a, a like kind of a, a boldable, boldable, moldable or pliable tape measure that you can wrap around things because on a lot of the tubes, they'll have a slight chamfer on the edge, so you know a standard tape measure won't bend around that so easily. But with a you know a foldy you know tape measure like this, I don't know really what to call this a retractable tape measure. Except all tape measures are retractable technically. Um, you know something that can bend around a round tube or a chamfered edge on a square tube helps so much. So another big recommendation for a tool uh, right there. Okay, so while I'm thinking about it, um, another measuring device that comes in pretty handy during the build is a set of calipers, um, especially digital ones. It, it's a lot easier and quicker to read. So I got these from Harbor Freight. I think they were like seven bucks. I'll put it on the video and also I'll put the list of tools in the description as well. Um, but this really helps when, you know, the tape measure doesn't work as well and you just want to, you know, find a distance or a gap real quick um, and it's pretty precise. Uh, this is the cheapest one that you can buy from Harbor Freight, I think. They also sell one for about 10 or $11. It's a little bit more precise and accurate. So you can also invest money if you want a little bit of a nicer set of calipers. All right, the next tool that I'm gonna, on the list here, I'm gonna talk about is a drill. Now this is a must have tool. It is the staple tool for a build. You gotta drill holes. You gotta use it for sanding and stuff. Now I can't find currently where my cordless drill is, but this is a wired drill. Um, so preferably get a cordless drill with two batteries, so you can have one charging and one using. Um, and you know, have if you can get a drill that's two speeds: one slow speed for you know more delicate things, and then one high speed um, set one with a high speed setting a low speed and a high speed setting on one drill. So that way, you know, if you need the high speed when you're sanding or if you're using a wire brush, it comes in, it works a lot better. So definitely a drill is a must have for a, any go-kart build. Oh, and then of course, if you have a drill, you're gonna need drill bits as well. So make sure to get a nice set of drill bits. Obviously the, you know, more expensive ones might last longer, they might not break, so, but you can, invest in whatever quality drill bits you want but you'll need a good assortment pretty large to pretty fine for all sorts of different parts of the build the next tool that also came in handy so many times throughout the build was an angle grinder um, now an angle grinder is kind of like a special drill that you know you put a disc on um, you can put a grinding disc a cutting disc which is really thin um, you can put a wire brush, you can put a sanding disc for all sorts of different uses. Um, this came in handy so many times when you need to grind down a weld or you know surface a tube before you weld it to get it nice and clean for the weld. Um, can't tell you how much this came in handy. This is the cheapest one that I think was maybe 20 bucks from uh, Harbor Freight. I'll confirm again with the price. Um, and then also you'll need an assortment of you know cutoff discs, grinding discs, sanding, and wire brushes. And you can get those when you need them throughout the build. But at some point you probably will need them, depending on how far um, into like fabrication you are. The next tool 
bring it front and center here, that you will need for your build is a, depending on how, you know, in depth you are gonna go with your build, is a miter saw. So if you look at, if you're planning on building your go-kart frame completely from scratch, you know, after catting it and designing it, you will definitely need a miter saw because you're gonna be, you know, buying, you know, raw stock of metal tubes from the store and you're gonna obviously have to cut them to size. Um, so this saw I got from Home Depot, this is one thing, I just spur of the moment, um, but they have it at Harbor Freight, so obviously it's gonna be a little bit cheaper at Harbor Freight. But basically, as long as it, you know, works well and has the functionability to change the angle at which you cut, not necessarily, I don't know if they call it the pitch, but I know like for woodworking ones, you can change, you know, also the angle, but also the pitch at which you cut to get a 45 cut for like a corner. Um, this doesn't have that functionality. You could try and find one, but honestly, I don't know if they make ones designed for metal. So you're gonna have to make sure you find one for metal um, not wood because there is a difference I think maybe in the power um, and also the blades the carbide blades you'll definitely need a few of those depending on how much you plan on cutting um, for the frame that you're going to be designing so again for me since I decided to build a go-kart completely from the ground up build my own frame cut my own tubes this was a workhorse and it came in very much handy use throughout the whole build from start to finish um, so if you plan on building a custom go-kart where you're going to be cutting tubes a lot, definitely going to need a miter saw. Alright, the next tools here, uh, tool set I'll say, ooh that was a bad noise. The next tool set I will talk about are your welding equipment. Now again, just like I said with the miter saw, depending on how far in depth you're going with your build will determine if you need or do not need this type of equipment or if you're just gonna outsource your welding to a welding shop if you don't feel like learning how to weld. Because that was something I had to decide on. Um, now I will tell you, for warning, it was very nice and convenient to have the welding skills to be able to do it all, you know, myself here in the garage rather than every time I needed something welded to, you know, schedule a time at the welding shop, pay the welder. So I highly encourage you Pick up a welder at Harbor Freight, pick up the stuff to weld with it, learn how to weld, practice, it comes in a lot of handy. So with that being said, here's the welder I got from Harbor Freight. It is just your standard 90 amp flux core uh, MIG wire welder. It's pretty basic. It has um, you know adjustable wire feed setting, a high and low amperage setting runs off your standard wall outlet and I didn't ever have a problem with blowing a breaker so you know I think it should be okay for most wall outlets I think I'm not an electrician so I don't really know how this works but I think garage outlets are sometimes wired to handle more amperage if you're an electrician maybe shed some light on this but I didn't have a problem with the outlet in my garage um, but if you do use an extension cord, make sure you use an extension cord that can handle the amperage. Um, a, you know, industrial grade extension cord, not like your standard white uh, one you will use for lamps in the house. So again, when you buy a welder, the, the you know, standard 90 amp flux core wire welder will do great. I've had a lot of success with it. Um, hasn't really caused me much trouble um, in terms of reliability. I do recommend getting Lincoln Electric or any you know higher quality welding wire than the one that comes with it and that Harbor Freight supplies. Um, you know it's a little bit more expensive, but it's worth it because um, you know it does I think give you better welds. Also, you will need a welding helmet. The, this uh, welder comes with a cheap mask, but you literally have to hold it to your face. Um, so it's a really pain in the butt because if you need to hold something and have the wire, or not the wire, the welding gun in your other hand, it's, uh, it's kind of annoying. So I highly encourage pick up an auto dimming uh, welding helmet. It's really convenient, super nice. You put it on, adjustable, you flip down when you're ready to weld and you're good to go. Also need a nice set of welding gloves because stuff will get very hot and sometimes you'll have to hold pieces in place very close to where you're welding so it will get very hot. Now with that being said also, what I have behind me 
is a welding table. Um, that was something that really helped uh, when welding smaller sections because the it has walls on the edge of the table so you can get a nice 90 fit um, and make sure your uh, welds are 90 degrees or whatever angle you need and you can ground to the entire table so you don't have to ground to your piece but you can just ground to the table and it'll weld it'll complete the circuit um, so you can weld so if you have the money for that I do recommend it because it helps when welding smaller sections um, I welded the front middle and rear section all as three different pieces starting on here first of the go-kart um, and then obviously welded them all together on the ground but having a welding table definitely helps and the last bit for welding I will say are welding magnets these aero looking magnets help so much they give you the 45 degree angles 90 degree angles you'll need um, because one big thing when you're welding is you want to avoid warping and these magnets will help a little bit to um, at least avoid major warping um, so you can buy a set of these at Harbor Freight big ones and small ones and it will definitely help when you're welding different pieces on your go-kart frame before I forget one big thing that I wanted to go over that is a must um, is safety gear uh, you know you're all about safety when you're doing fabrication and builds like this you don't want to injure yourself or anybody else so obviously have a nice assortment of glasses um, you know that are designed for being safety glasses, not just standard cheap sunglasses. Um, you can get them for really cheap at Harbor Freight. Um, so that way, if you have someone that's helping you, you have an extra set for them. Um, but also I recommend, like I have a pair of goggles um, that like seal your eyes because these, you know, sometimes will leave gaps underneath, you know, your eye, uh, where the bags of your eyes are um, and stuff can fly up underneath. So can also get a set of goggles as well that have a more of a seal around your all of your eyes um, all of your many eyes that you have another big thing is a face mask that covers your whole face um, this comes in big handy when you're using a wire brush wheel on a high-speed angle grinder because when you're uh, you know grinding stuff down with the wire brush getting paint off rust off those little wire bristles will fly off at high rates of speed and sometimes they will stick into your skin. I had them stick into my arms. When I, even when I wore a full sleeve sweatshirt, they stuck into the sweatshirt. So it really hurts, especially when you get hit in the face with those wire brushes. So I highly recommend a face mask on top of wear your goggles and then a face mask. And last but not least, Get some safety gloves, some mechanics gloves. It really helps prevent scratch, uh, you know, cutting yourself when working near sharp uh, surfaces. Um, obviously, don't use safety gloves if you've taken a safety class before. You know not to use safety gloves with an angle grinder or a miter saw because it'll just catch the glove and you know take your hand with it. Whereas if it'll just nick your hand. Um, so, but wear safety gloves when doing um, anything else on the go kart that has sharp objects nearby. All right, next up on the list is another power tool that I got from Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight. This is a reciprocating saw. So it's a saw that just it's got a reciprocating you know, motor and an arm, and this saw blade goes back and forth. Um, this really helps for certain situations where an angle grinder doesn't have the depth to get to it. Um, there are a few different times in the go-kart build where the angle grinder could have done the job but it was really difficult and it you might have lost precision so get one of these guys that you know you can use to cut in you know narrow spaces um, this one also has the functionality to rotate so you can cut at a you know sideways and stuff like that um, this guy is pretty cheap and then you'll also have to get a set of blades that are designed for cutting metal so this is kind of this is not necessarily a must-have but in certain situations, it definitely does help. All right, the next tool I'm gonna to go over is a drill press. Now a drill press is another one of those tools where if you have the money for it, awesome, but it's not a must have. This is an extra tool and it does allow for a lot of extra precision when drilling holes. Um, obviously with the drill press, you can assure that your hole is gonna be straight perpendicular um, to the surface that you're drilling against 
Whereas if you're freehanding it, you know, the drill bit can go a little bit sideways and it makes for, um, you know, a tough situation when lining up, you know, bolts to go through the hole, especially if it's like a two-sided uh, tube or something like that. Um, this definitely helps. Got this, actually this was donated to me from a professor I worked with, so thank you Professor Jackson for donating this to the Nat Automotive Fabrication Garage. Um, so this was a really cool tool to use for the recent projects on the go-kart. It really helped making sure holes were drilled straight. Wish I could have, I mean I did borrow one throughout the course of the go-kart build, but it was an older one and it didn't work the greatest. Um, so for drilling, you know, the suspension tabs where you need the hole to be straight through and, and it can't have any chance of it, you know, being at an angle, this definitely comes in handy. Um, this is pretty cheap from Harbor Freight, does the job really nice, um, but is, it is an extra tool, um, not a must have. But if you have one or have the money to get one, awesome, because it definitely helps. All right, so the next set of tools here are pretty handy and I definitely recommend these if you are able to buy them. Our vices. Now this is, I have two different vices. This vice, um, if you get the drill press like I just went over, you will need a vice like this. This vice is a, like a flat vice and um, because this drill press doesn't come with any way to secure or hold anything down when you're drilling it. So this has got some mounting points on it and it's nice and flat so it works perfect for a drill press. So if you're gonna have a drill press, definitely recommend this type of vise. But the other vise that I have is just your standard vise that mounts to a table, or in this case, I use it a lot with my welding table. Um, and this is so helpful, can't recommend this enough. Um, I think it was relatively cheap, but it basically serves as an extra set of hands when you're welding. Actually, don't weld with this because um, you'll heat up the bearings inside and ruin, with them, ruin them. I did that by experience, um, so I know. <laughs> um, but when you're you know, grinding or sanding, um, anything like that, it really helps to be able to you know, not put your hands next and hold it really close, because if you, you know, have a small part, um, you don't want to be holding it right next to where you're grinding. So this helps, you can secure it in there, and it's a lot easier. You have more precision with whatever tool you're working with definitely recommend getting a vise. Next tool on the list is our jack stands. Um, and these are pretty much a luxury, although they do add quite a bit of convenience when you're working on your go-kart. You guys have probably seen it multiple times where the go-kart is propped up on jack stands. You know, these guys have, you know, you can raise them up fairly high, get the go-kart off the ground so you're not bending over all the time to work on something. Um, so I got these all from Harbor Freight. They come in sets of two, so you just have to buy two sets, um, or two pairs, I guess. Uh, but yeah, these definitely help a lot. You know, when you gotta prop it up, you gotta take the tires off, whatever, um, it really helps. And then I guess, with that being said, jack sands, and if you have the money for a jack, like a standard car jack, that does help to prop it up. Um, if you don't have an extra set of hands, like when Matt's not here, I use the jack instead of you know having him in place pull it up while I put the jack stands underneath it or vice versa. So those are strictly or pretty much a luxury thing, but they definitely do add quite a bit of convenience. So I'm getting towards the end of the list here, so bear with me. But the last two things, not entirely necessary, at least this tool-wise, but these are files. You have a round file, a triangular file, and a flat file. They definitely work for all sorts of different situations when you've got some metal burrs from cutting or welding, whatever it might be. Pretty, uh, pretty cheap to get a set of these at Harbor Freight. So recommend those. And then this is a Dremel tool or a finishing tool. Um, it doesn't have the cutting power to like cut through metal uh, like straight all, all the way through. Um, but for doing like, you know, really fine finishing work or sanding, recommend it but definitely not a necessity these are kind of expensive so but it does help in certain situations and i'd say the last tool that i could think of at least um and it'll come in handy at more towards the end of your build or maybe in the middle is a little toolbox so i actually my neighbor gave this to me so thank you neighbor 
Um, and it's just an old Craftsman toolbox. I thought it was kind of cool. It's really vintage um, and it's kind of beat up. I was going to actually paint this the same color as the go-kart, but it was going to be quite a bit of work. So instead what I decided to do was kind of like sticker bomb it. And I think it looks pretty cool. All the stickers I collect from different car shows I go to or businesses that hand them out, I just slap them on here. And it kind of adds like a nice cool little uh, feature to the go-kart. Um, so this really comes in handy when I take the go-kart out to you know race it on a in a parking lot or a street somewhere um, when I have you know Matt uses his truck and we can take it places um, but it definitely helps because you can put your basic tools in here wrenches screwdrivers in case anything breaks or you know if you need to fix anything or if you need to take parts off when transporting having a little toolbox on the go definitely helps or if you're limited in garage space um, organization is a key um, so this could help you being organized so um, having a little toolbox definitely helps quite a bit and now with that being said that's going to conclude my little list here of possible tools that you will need in order to build your own custom go-kart from the ground up um, if there are any tools that I forgot to mention in my list here in the video because um, I know a lot of my viewers have already built their own go-karts or work on their go-karts right now um, if there's a tool that I forgot that you found really helped you out in your build, leave it in the comments below because it could really help someone out um, possibly when they're going through their build. Now, with that being said, you know, make sure you focus on you know, your budget for your build, um, get the tools that you definitely will need, and the luxury items can come later um, if you save up more money or whatnot. Um, but one big thing I want to mention when building your go-kart, and this kind of ties into the tools a little bit, is stay organized. I highly encourage you, stay organized. It really helps being um, you know, productive. I can't stand having a messy garage. It like messes with my mind and it makes me um, distracted almost. So when you get all these tools, try and find a you know, place in the garage to put them and organize them well because it will definitely help. So that's going to conclude today's video on the how to build a go-kart series for the tools that you will need. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. If you haven't already, definitely subscribe for more because I'm going to try and you know, keep this series alive and going more. I have, already have an idea for the sixth video in the series, so we'll be recording that soon. So thanks again guys for coming by this video today and stay tuned for future videos on the channel. Cause I from my soul